Pancreatic cancer is a rare disease compared to other malignancies. The more informed you can be, the better you're able to make informed decisions about your treatment. A lot of people don't know what the pancreas is. It's really just in the middle of the body, so nobody can feel the pancreas. And that's one of the problems with the pancreas. It's kind of in a, in a hidden part of the body, so if a cancer rises there, it's hard to detect. It releases specific enzymes that help us digest important um, nutrients so that those nutrients can then be absorbed in the body and nourish the body. 95% of pancreas cancers are called adenocarcinoma. Adenocarcinoma is by far the most common cell type of cancer, and for whatever reason, when it rises in the pancreas cancer, it's a particularly difficult uh, cancer to treat. There are cells in the pancreas called islet cells that make hormones that help our bodies handle glucose. But those islet cells that create hormones can also give rise to cancer, and we call those types of tumors neuroendocrine tumors. Patients with pancreatic cancer often have complete blockage of their pancreatic duct. And as a result of that, the normal enzymes that would be flowing from the pancreas into the, uh, into the small bowel just don't get there. And so it's important to replace those enzymes with uh, oral form of the enzymes. And that really can help diminish some of the um, bloating and gas that um, some of our patients experience when they're diagnosed. The other thing that this disease can do is cause pain. Uh, for reasons that we don't quite understand, the disease tends to track up the nerves in the back of the abdomen, and that can cause tremendous uh, back and abdominal pain. That pain can be very well managed by a number of maneuvers. One is to give long-acting narcotics, but we can also go in and inject the nerves and basically block the pain. And that also can be a very um, helpful maneuver so that a patient, again, can rest better, eat better, sleep better. So as an oncologist, whenever we diagnose pancreas cancer, or any cancer, we give it a stage. But pancreas cancer is really an exception. Even though it is stage one, two, three, and four, that's not the way the oncologist thinks about it. We think of pancreatic cancer in terms of the extent of disease. Is it local and confined to the pancreas and operable? Is it local and confined to the pancreas, but approaching some of the major vessels that might, that might make the operation difficult, and we call that borderline? Is it so advanced that it completely surrounds those blood vessels or other critical organs, and then we call that locally advanced? Or is it actually spread through lymph nodes or the bloodstream to distant sites, such as the liver, and then we call that metastatic. So when we think about um, treatments for any cancer, the, the big three that we have are surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy. If the tumor can be removed, there is some chance that that patient can be cured. Regardless of um, the extent of the disease that we can see, we know that there is a big chance that there are tumor cells that have already spread to other sites. So even in operable disease, we tend to use additional therapy. We call this adjuvant therapy. It's often chemotherapy. It may be chemotherapy combined with radiation after surgery. When the tumor cannot be removed, and yet is isolated to one place, we can aim a beam within a defined volume and deliver enough radiation to that tumor to kill a substantial number of the cells. When a patient has local inoperable disease or disease that is spread to other sites, we almost always start those patients out with chemotherapy. different classes of chemotherapy, but basically what we think of is systemic agents. Systemic agents mean agents that we give either in the blood or by mouth that go everywhere in the body. Side effects are a, a normal part of treatment, but it's really important to remember that a lot of side effects can be managed. So having that open communication with your doctor about side effects and pain and anything else that you're experiencing is going to be really, really important. 
it's pretty interesting to reflect on the last 10 years and what's happened to our therapy for pancreatic cancer. I would say that 10 years ago, it was unusual when a patient got better with treatment. Now it's expected. With our current therapies, 80% of patients can expect some sort of disease control. And sometimes it's dramatic. And we are making incremental gains and cures for some. We have uh, such success now at curing a whole number of different kinds of cancers with a whole number of different types of treatments. Clinical trials are an essential step in that process. Whenever I have a conversation with patients about treatment options, I always talk with them about clinical trials. A patient can get information about clinical trials by calling into the patient and liaison services program. We maintain a database of all of the pancreatic cancer specific clinical trials that are going on in the country and the patient can receive a personalized clinical trial search when they call in and speak with a PALS associate. Even though you can ask for help from your healthcare team and from your family and from your friends, it ultimately is your decision to make as to how you'd like to proceed with your pancreatic cancer journey. The Patient and Liaison Services, or PALS program at the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network is really here to help patients understand all of their options and to work through any questions that they may have about their diagnosis. And the patient can become more educated and more empowered about what their different options are and then take that back to their physician. I would recommend that recently diagnosed pancreatic cancer patients reach out to the PALS program at the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network. Mm -hmm.